Dun da da da. Dun da da da. Didn't put me off anything. We're just here to fucking freestyle. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't need to. I watched the whole game, you know. If you didn't watch the whole game, you can't fucking be here. I. What is what is this shit? That, that's that, why that's why X isn't here. Well, what is this shit? Speaking of him, what is this shit? I didn't watch the game. I fell asleep. My vacation, blah blah. Like it was yeah, the that's mid. Right, that's right, X. We're calling you out right at the very beginning of this fucking show. The midday game. What do you mean you were sleeping? Listen, you old fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing in bed at 425 in the afternoon? I know it's a Sunday, but good goddamn, child. Yeah, we've got things to do, man. Fucking killing me. Just All saying, right. We love you. We do love you. Welcome back. Week three. Yes. Of incredibly uncensored Detroit Lions. Restore the roar. Defend the den. Motor City Kitties. Do all the shit episode and it's a real victory monday Ooh, baby man feels week, good week one it's like ah i'm on pins and needles week two i'm like what the fuck we stepped in the needles we yes, were on the needles we stepped in the yeah. needles <laughs> takes me back to saw two the girl falls in the pants syringes everywhere uh, yeah just dated myself i'm fine with it though i can feel that though yeah i don't like it and then week three here we are celebrating what i would consider a true blue victory monday yeah and you know what it wasn't it wasn't a blowout it wasn't anything extravagant, but exactly what Campbell said, it was gritty and it was a ground out fucking win. Yeah, it was a balance win. Our our defense matches yep. what we all expected last year and it just didn't work out. And this year we've we've got that hold. So if we do play shitty, yeah, we're still in the game. Right. Well, and I think the beauty of it is, and we'll we'll actually try to follow the timeline going through, you know, first half, second half, and whatnot. But one thing I liked, we got back to basics. Yeah. It's like we we found those fucking 10 missing pages of our playbook and said, Oh yeah, we have one of the most dangerous running back duos in the entire league. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and fucking spank those ponies and make them drop some fucking yards down there in Norman, Arizona. Right. Yeah. I feel like right at the beginning of the game, I could see it that they were, they were going to hit the running game hard. Monty back, was out back there. Back to just, basics, baby. Yep. Well, did you see Dan Campbell either said it or I read it. One of the two where he said uh, that they pumped Montgomery full of IVs for the last four days and said they were just going to ride him yes. like the whole game, you know? <laughs> yep. And I'm like, what was in them IVs, you know? Hey, as long as it's not PEDs, I'm happy with it. <laughs> Keep it up. He played like a fucking monster. Yeah. Like a fucking monster. Yeah, dude. I can't believe Chicago gave him up. Yeah, I'm a, I'm not upset. Me neither. I'm not upset. Man. I'm like, why are we taking Chicago's table scraps? That's yeah, it's kind of what I thought. And then we too. look at it and was like, oh, well, Chicago, you are the dumbest organization in football. So we're gonna go ahead and just roll this motherfucker and just make him the fucking bell of the ball. Yeah. Uh I mean, and them two together. I mean, Jesus, what do you do? You know, they'll stop, they'll stop them a couple times and then, man, they break yeah. that one loose and it just makes it all worth it. But I swear to God, Demo yesterday, he, it's like he was just, he was a man just resurrected. Yeah. He wasn't stopping for anything. No. Like he kept his legs churning. I mean, his yards after contact yesterday had to be in double digits damn near. Oh, for sure. I, I don't know if, the, I don't know if he ever got solo tackled, did he? I don't think so. I mean, it was always everything a gang was two, tackle. three, four yeah. guys, and they they couldn't really get him down. They would stand him up. Yeah, you know, and that's how he ended up. His well, feet then, were off the it, ground. And then kudos to our offensive line. Yeah, not only making the holes, but then following up behind them. We can go to our angels in the outfield play. Yeah, you know where basically Arizona has picked him up, and then our <laughs> lines just behind him pushing him across the first down line. I'm like, and I was losing my proverbial shit yeah same so i'm jumping around i'm like this is the second coming of christ <laughs> jesus will carry him across the fucking first down marker i'm like this is the best thing i've ever fucking seen <laughs> and jessica's in the kitchen making dinner she's like this is the most absurd shit she's like you're not being recorded i said i don't care that doesn't matter I'm having the time of my fucking life. Oh man, yeah, it was fun to watch, and uh, I mean, Murray got away for a couple scurries, but it was it was uh, it was good to see our defense right had clearly prepared for that right. You know, right. So I'll make one more comment, and then we'll jump into kind of going quarter by quarter. 
Sure. That sound reasonable? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So for me, my biggest takeaway from the game, and I'm probably spoiling it here at the end when we talk about it, Mm -hmm. but it was Jack Campbell. Knowing that Anzalone was out and that Campbell was on the play calls and Campbell was the guy. I mean, he's a second year rookie, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Second second year rookie. You know, he's been he's been uh well trained. He's had the ability to really learn from some real strong players like Anzalone and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but seeing Rodrigo and fucking, uh, and Campbell Campbell back there with Campbell getting the call and kind of running the defense. I'm like that. That's what I wanted to see. Yeah. That was awesome. You know, after week one and two and him largely not getting a lot of action, Mm -hmm. not that he wasn't involved, but not seeing like any standout plays or anything that I was really impressed with. You know, you get a little lukewarm on certain players, sure. And, but to see the way that he handled himself yesterday, oh yeah, baby, it was good I, to see. I, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying a little Campbell in my life. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I'll tell you something that I'm not happy about is all the injuries. Yeah, uh, looks like Branch is going to be out a significant amount of time. Yep, and that's just from the concussion protocol, right? So uh, I haven't actually read anything definitive yet, but I did see that. Campbell said something about we want to let him heal first and then see if it needs surgery. So I'm not range. Yeah. So, Oh no. So I'm not sure exactly what happened. Like I even kind of sifted through the comment section there to see if there was anything, but nobody really knows what the injury is. Well, and that kind of screwed me today too, because they were on the West coast. It was a four o'clock presser, which normally it's noon. Oh yeah. So I didn't get the presser was until four and I was busy doing you know, dad shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Real life stuff. <laughs> Real life stuff. Yeah. And then uh Davenport out for the season. Uh which did they confirm that? Yeah. Today. Fuck. Yep. Uh which sucks but doesn't surprise me. I mean he was a fucking injury prone in Minnesota also. And right. Um I was really just hoping not could... surprising, but we were hoping like give us a give us a healthy season. Yeah. And I I get what they were thinking. Uh, Big risk, big return. Right. You know, if he doesn't get hurt, he was uh, he was good. Right. You know, he was so just a force in there. But... Motherfucker needs to take his vitamins, man. I know. So he's out <laughs> for the season. Um, and then who is the other guy? Oh, uh, Ali McNeil and Sam Laporta are both day to day, which is good. That's so that's good. High ankle sp- or low ankle sprain for Laporta and okay. something else. That's better than a high ankle sprain for sure. Because that's what uh, Mahomes had last season. Yep. That was and, and kind of lived around all year. Shit. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I can't imagine running around on that. No. So, okay. Low ankle sprain and then McNeil's day to day. Yep. Okay. What was his? Was his a leg? I think, yeah. I think, I think his was his ankle also. Don't quote me, but I think that's. I mean, which isn't surprising. Everybody getting stepped on and falling all over each other. Oh, Demo yeah. Demo running up the middle. So yeah, you're trying to make was holes. was an elbow. Or McNe- McNeil's on the defensive line. Yeah. They're. Yeah. With that, with, I watch with football. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> they are still getting stepped on. Though. Yes, they are getting stepped on. Um, all right. Well, let's let's just kick it off. Yeah. So yesterday, four twenty five kick. Um, and with the early games, we might as well touch on that divisional wise. Mm-hmm. You know, the fucking Vikings and the Packers still steamrolling. Vikings look good. The Vikings looked really good. Pack- Sam Darnold is a man resurrected. Packers and Malik resurrected he came from tennessee and didn't do shit and then comes over here and has to back up and he's like oh shit okay yeah i bet tennessee wish they had him back with all the bullshit will levis is putting him through (laughs) what a mess oh that's such a fucking disaster right now i know uh speaking of disasters uh uh, chicago they didn't win uh finally their defense couldn't pull him out of the hole yeah caleb williams threw the ball play yesterday uh, the Colts. The Colts. The Colts That's can't right. stop the run, and Caleb Williams threw the ball like 52 or 55 times. Like your third game in the NFL, and you're going to have your rookie quarterback throwing the ball 50 times. Two interceptions. He finally got a touchdown, though. Yeah, so he That's, finally got that. That's probably game. what he said. He's like, I'm fucking throwing a right. touchdown no matter if what. I got to throw yep. six picks. So- <laughs> But yeah, it's kind of a dumpster fire over there right now, too. We'll see if they which is fine. We'll let Chicago be the dumpster fire. That's no problem. Yep. I I'm not concerned, but we've got a tough division. Yeah. You know, three out of the four teams, you know, look like they could be in playoff contention, you know, come the last three, four weeks of the season. That would be our 
fucking luck, though. Right. The years that we're good, we got to right. win 14 games to <laughs> right. get into the 14 play, just to get a wild card. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, that would be our luck. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, for I mean, sure. I'm, it's just, you know. Iron sharp, sharpens iron, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So you want to be the best, you play the best. Well, I mean, this was a good win. Uh, like I was saying last week, it was kind of skeptical because we beat the Rams yep. and then Arizona just put a clinic on the Rams. So right. I was like, oh, shit. Right. Yeah. That was a conversation going into this weekend yeah, was like, exactly. what's your what's your level of comfort? Mine was just anxiety. My, me too. I was I didn't know how to feel. I'm like, nope. well, who's going to show up? Right. You know, but that for very first drive of the game that we had, we marched right down the field and got a touchdown five With minutes. With primarily running the ball. Yeah. We had a few passes. I think two of them on third down. Yep. But it was it was an amazing fucking first drive. I'm like, that feels better. Yeah. And the this passes This feels were like Laporta, what we were doing last year. For sure. Yep. Passes were to Laporta, St. Brown. Yep. Monty just steamrolling up the just middle. And I'm like, I'm like, this is fantastic. Yep. yep. Well, and so then... Conversely, Arizona gets the ball. Same exact thing. Take it right down. Yep. I'm like another God five minutes. Damn it. And of course, Terry and Arnold down there with another PI. Yep. You know, so that didn't help. Yeah. Because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was a third down, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For that sure. That was a third down, and that put him first and goal. First and goal. Right, first right and goal. down there. Yep. So I was like, ah, it's not fucking great. But again, our defense was they were staying active. Yeah. And what I did like is Later in the game, Kyler Murray was able to run for a few, mm-hmm. uh, a few first downs. I think two or three first downs. In the second half, for sure. Yeah. In the second half. But in that first half, we really kind of kept him contained within that pocket. Yeah. He had a, I think he had like one big run, you know, that was probably yeah. kind of aggravating, but not much after that. Yeah, because I, mean, I think it was, I think it, they were backed up. It was like 13 or 14 yards. And then he got a nice chunk run there. And that, yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yep. That pocket was collapsing pretty quick, though. He didn't have anything really clean right. to stand in, and right. it was kind of hard to get out because their their circle was wide around him, you know, right. and then kind of crunching in, right. which is pretty cool. Their uh, their backup tackle though, Arizona's did a really good job on Hutch before he got injured. Yeah, he's like their third string. Guys never right. started an NFL game ever right. in his career. Yeah, they're they're, they're fucking taking recruits, you know, standing right outside the tunnel. Like, <laughs> hey, how much do you weigh? Can you get in a three point stance? Come on, come with me. Yeah, they are thin. They are very, and that's a lot of teams are thin right now. We're seeing injuries across the board. I mean, I'd like to say the karma was just slapping its dick on the table and you know shitting all over us, but it's not. Every single team is like they're losing linemen, they're losing receivers, tight ends going down. It's like holy shit. Yeah, it is pretty wild. A lot of the statistics this year they're saying are like much different. The running backs uh, are running a lot more than their pa- than the right. quarterbacks are passing. You know, and just statistics that have kind of fell off over the years are kind of coming back. And, right, and you can see it. That's um, because we showed those motherfuckers the formula last year. Right, right. Own the time of possession and run it down their fucking throats. And I see people when I watch other games run these same plays that the Lions run. Sure. I'm like, oh, that's the Lions sweep right yep. there. You know. Yep. Yeah, well, and and watching St. Brown get back to true form, you know, and doing his, you know, 12 to 14 yard outs and then just sitting. Yep. Sitting, waiting for the ball, and then boom, he's got it first down. And those those made me feel really good, too. Feel great. Well, it's getting back to the things we built success on last year. Yep. That's what we need. I hope that's what they reiterated, you know, because... If if they know what we're gonna do, but we do it good enough where they can't stop it, right? Fuck them. Exactly. You know, like let's. let's Here's our playbook. Yeah. Good luck, motherfucker. Yeah. Because we've got the weapons. Yeah. We have the skill. The offensive line. The offensive line looked a lot better yesterday yeah. as well. Oh yeah. You know, protecting golf. There was only a few hurries. You know, I think one or two sacks, which isn't uncommon in the NFL. Yeah. We're playing the best of the best. You know, so some people were still getting through. Goff did a little juking and jiving. You know, I seen him. He got sacked once or twice, but I seen him kind of dipping the shoulders around yep. and stepping up a little yep. bit. That yeah, made me feel good. stepping up in the pocket was huge. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. okay. Because he got that sack, and Jesus, the the guy just kind of came in and just, and I'm like, Mark, just step to the right a little right. bit, you know, or just to the left. Or just, yeah, just yep. do something. And he did after that. So yep. they probably told him the same thing. Well, because that, that sack looked fucking weak. I was like, I agree. I was like, bro, come on. Come on, dude. 
even my fucking 10 year old's gonna sidestep that yeah, give me some effort here. <laughs> right but maybe he just didn't see him or something I right don't know. yeah but, i mean there's always a blind side yeah right for sure no worries all right so we get out of the first we get out of the first quarter at seven seven yep right I, I believe so yep seven seven in the first then we get into the second we still appear to be moving the ball fairly well yep you we know? End, well we end up driving down for another touchdown eventually i don't know if it's on that that first drive there or not but we end up driving down getting another touchdown yep. where uh bates motel was temporarily closed and we missed the extra point which kills me, oh, me too. kills me and it just knowing that Matt Prater, that fuck, is still on Arizona, I'm like, that fucking old drunk bastard is still fucking <laughs> kicking 60 yarders. Come on, Bates. You got to do the shit. To speak on Prater just for a second, did you see his face when he walked out to the field? He just looked old. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's, I think he's only 40 or 41, Yeah, you know, but man, he looked... He looked rough, but he can still kick a football. Dark whiskeys will do that to you. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's me just stoking the fire of the rumor mill. But, uh, you know, hey, it is what it is. Good yeah, for you. Yeah. You're still out there getting the job done, so who gives a fuck? Yeah. Right? So, I mean, the second half, I mean, by and large, there's not a tremendous amount of stuff to talk about here. Obviously, we're going to get into the second half. Right. The first half was solid. Our offense was clicking. Mm -hmm. Our defense was kind of finding its position. And of course you got to make, you have to make adjustments in your game plan. Yep. And right. But that's we, not, that's we not held them, unexpected. We held them three points though. So, I mean, it's, I'll, I'll take it. I'm not mad about it. So we finish, we finish the quarter 20 to 10, or we finish the half. The half. At right. halftime, it's 20 to 10. And so then we come back in and now this is what we've talked about the entire fucking all of last year and even into this season, our fucking slump after halftime. Yeah, I, I still don't know what the hell we do in there. Like, I at this point, don't even let them go in the fucking back. And it's don't like, go in the back. You stay out on the fucking field and stretch. Yeah, that's pretty much what we need to do because it's like Arizona came out and they planned uh, for the defense that we were running. Right. And and I don't know if man, I don't know. There's no way that we can make an adjustment because they just. Yeah. Every, all three games, they've just hammered it right down our throats in the right. second half. Right. So that's kind of concerning. And the fact that we didn't score in the second half is also a little bit concerning. Right. Um, but we were, we were winning the time of possession. Absolutely. So with those like multiple three and outs, because yes, we were, our offense was playing shitty, but so was Arizona's offense. Right. Yeah. So because of that, in my mind, what I see is by winning the time of possession battle. Cause I think we had like 36, 37 minutes of possession. So by having that much possession, we at least were keeping our play calling intelligent and using the clock to our advantage right. where we weren't just going out and throwing three incomplete passes, chewing up 12 seconds. Yeah. That's and true. then, you know, just giving the ball back basically like we didn't even have it. At a minimum, we were doing two runs and a pass. For sure. You know, and still mixing it up. I'm not saying Ben Johnson was, you know, calling a bunch of vanilla plays. But it was like, we're chunking it out. We're getting, you get one or two first downs. Even if you only get one, you're still chewing up more clock. Letting Demo and letting Gibbs run, you know, run to the outside. Stay in bounds, shit like that. For sure. And that's the important thing, you know, is all them guys seem to know that when you get in those time critical yeah. situations, yep. they'll all kind of slide down at the sideline and stuff, which yep. is really cool to see. Um, well, they're, they're playing smart football. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're playing winning football. Right. You know, right. The cool thing, uh, before we get out of the first half, we can't forget about the two minute warning blunder. Yep which wasn't our blunder, which was nope. the ref's blunder. Yep. Um, and it went in our favor, which never it happens. It never happens. And that felt really good. Yep. Because, um, yeah, keep going. So, I don't know. Did you hear the whistle? I did not. Well, I heard, I initially heard the whistle, but it was, it was very faint. It wasn't like it was a like mic'd up whistle. It was like just one of them, like a sideline Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened there, but I assumed it was the guy maybe behind Jared Goff and Jared heard it. And that's 
kind of why he was throwing the ball was to like dead deadpan the ball like right. hey we're done you know right. but it just happened to bounce off that guy's helmet and then he got absolutely then rocked he got, he got smoked just, I'm like, god damn it did you see him on the ground he's like what in the hell <laughs> like, yeah. like what? god damn it like you motherfuckers what the hell so that uh the zebras were hanging him out to dry <laughs> <laughs> he's probably like sorry jg we're gonna give you another play yeah oh, my bad yeah <laughs> So immediately after that, right. we get the hook and ladder. Oh my god! I w- I don't know about you, but I went absolutely ballistic. Yeah, I jumped and almost touched the ceiling. Yep. Just, it, I was what? A, I mean, what a! What I was a, so per- happy. Yeah, what a perfectly designed and executed play. You know, with I two, was not expecting that at with all. With two guys that are largely huge after uh, with the yak yeah you know the yards after contact oh. but st brown grabs that ball makes the turn and then gibbs is right on his fucking ass I, I mean just the the guy he noticed but he noticed so late oh you yeah know, he just he's like kind of double looked yeah shit here he comes you know and then we get and a touchdown was, off of it boom oh so. it was fucking beautiful it was a work of art it was. It was. It's like going to the Louvre, you know, seeing Mosley, Mona Lisa, and it brings a tear to your eye. That's what that shit was yesterday. Was. That shit was so fucking beautiful. Yeah. It brought a tear to my eye. It felt good. And I watched that replay no less than like 20 times because it was all yeah. over my social feeds. So the whole halftime, I didn't give a fuck about any updates. I'm just watching that play. I'm like, I'm so happy. They hey, put a, did you see this? I'm they, so happy. They put a crown on Monty so fast oh, on, yeah. when they had him up in the air. You know, yep. they got a crown on him, just shuffling him through. It's I, so great. I love it. It's so great. So that was that was such a stellar finish to that first half. Yeah, and it was and it was good because uh, I mean, according to everybody, Arizona was playing pretty good. You know, um, at that moment, right? Minus they have they don't have the right tackle, but right. Other than that. It, and they do have some good pieces. Marvin Harrison's going to be a problem. I mean, this Ooh. is only his rookie year. Oh my gosh! And uh, man, that guy's—he looks like he's been in the league already. Yep. He's you know, fast. He's strong. Looks like a grown ass man. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah. And the way he runs his routes, you know. And thank God, thank God, Aaron Glenn had the wherewithal to understand like this is a massive fucking weapon. Guess what? We're going man. Yeah. We're not going to, we're not getting picked apart. Like by like how Tampa Bay did us last week. No. We're going to make sure that we've got somebody on you like white on rice, you know, and fucking Terry and Arnold. He did the job. Yeah. Well, he played good. He didn't get any touchdowns on him. No, he got that. Uh, he got a PI. Yep. I think and that was said, in the first half. Yeah. And I think they said he only got 30, 39 yards. Yeah. Was targeted quite a few times. Six. Only had a couple catches. Yeah. yeah. So, Six targets, two catches, and 30 some odd yards. And I think some of those yards were because of the PI yeah, that they gave him to yeah, him. Yeah, most likely. So it's like, that's a pretty damn good job by our, our rookie cornerback. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed with how that young man's playing. I mean, kudos to you, Tarion. You're fucking crushing, my guy. Davis did good too on, yeah. the, on the other side. Yep. Kirby Joseph with another pick. Yep. Oh, I love Joseph. I cannot wait. Let's let's talk about injuries for a second. Mm. What's going on with Melifonwu? I'm not sure, uh, but something's going on. Because Melifonwu last year finished off the season just with like one pick a game. I think the last yeah. six games he was averaging a pick a game. I'm like, Jesus, bro, let's Love go. That. Yeah. You know, and I think he got hurt in training camp. I just didn't think he'd be out this long. Yeah, no kidding. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if it was something tells me it was a back injury, but that okay. could be that could be wrong. Well, fingers crossed Melifonwu comes back because adding him in there is another safety. You know, along with Joseph, you know, we get these teams that are going to want to be pass heavy. That's going to be huge. those are the that's the duo you want sitting in the safety slot. Well, and I mean, hopefully that's going to have to be the team's MO. If our D line keeps up like it is right, right now, hopefully right. they do become pass heavy because right. if they can't get that play action game going, that's what our offense depends on. Right. You know, is establishing that run and then the right. guys get open. Right. Well, and it, it pulls the linebackers. Well, it pulls the linebackers in, in which right. opens up more, you know, they've got more space in the secondary for, you know, St. Brown, J Mo, yep. you know, Laporta to get in there and find those soft pockets to sit in, yep. you know, and get those fucking darts from JG. Speaking of J Mo, he didn't have uh, any, do you have any receiving yards yesterday? No. I don't think so, no. but he had, I mean, he had some rushing yards. Yeah. He was out there quite a bit. Yep. Um, just as a decoy and the guys get pretty good. He's a good blocker. We did miss some key blocks yesterday that yeah. kind of fuck some things up, but he's JMO's 
I, I'm I'm is an all super, around asset. I'm super impressed with how JMO's really come into his own Same. and is really, he wants to contribute. He wants to be here. He wants to be a part of the team. And like we talked about before, you know, throw in blocks, you know, doing these reverses and shit like that, yeah. you know, whatever it takes. Right. I yeah, mean, at I, the end of the day, he just wants to win. And I love all those. I love the, the, the fancy plays in there, the hooks, yeah. the hook and ladders, the jet yeah. sweeps. And, yeah. the you know, they stuffed one yesterday, yesterday, then one of them little doublers, you know, and okay. J-Mo tried getting up and around. And, no shit. And, yeah. They hit him for. Yeah. Seven, oh yeah. Seven it was a loss. loss. Yeah. Seven yeah. Yard yep, loss. I remember that. That was in the second half. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's say we're out of halftime. We're getting into the, the second half. There's just not a lot to go over there with the exception of a few of like the, the demo runs. Cause wasn't, uh, wasn't Demo's Angels in the outfield run? Wasn't that in the second half, or was that in the first? Yeah, no, I think I, I think that was in the fourth quarter, wasn't it? Yes, it was in the fourth. I, quarter. I believe it was. Yeah, because that was one of the final drives. That was right before JG iced it by putting them fucking Speedy Gonzalez shoes on yep. and making that fucking ru- first down run. So it was kind of a situation for Arizona. They only had one timeout because they burned up a couple of them because we were driving down the field. Right. They started getting nervous, yep. you know, because we were we were going to get some points, they thought, right. you know, and they're like, oh, shit, what's going to happen? Yeah. Um. So once they got the ball back, they, they had that one timeout to burn, and then it was just a matter of, but it was pass, 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 and they couldn't get anything going. Right. They gave the ball back to us. Yep. That's when all I th- believe that's when them runs happened. Yeah. Then that needed- demo run was glorious, though. It was glorious. And I mean, that motherfucker, they had him eight inches off the ground. Yeah. And he's just, he's got the ball like this. <laughs> and he's, he and can't do entire, anything. And His- our entire O line's behind him. Pushing the Arizona players who are holding him across the first down marker. Yeah. I'm like, let's go, motherfucker. Woo! For a first down. Oh, dude. I, was so I loved excited. it. I, I was so fucking pumped. I loved it. Yep. It was a fucking thing of beauty. Well, and I mean, then we were at, man, it was like third and six or third and seven. Yeah. Uh, we like one more first down wins it, or we're going to have to give the ball back to Arizona. Right. Uh, With no timeouts, but they're a dangerous still, team. Yeah. yeah. You have Mercedes Harrison. I mean, dude's going to fucking put up and shut up, throw it up and go for a PI. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. really probably exactly. what they would have done. Yep. Um, but like you said, Jared wheels golf. Yeah, baby. Turned him on, you know, and I seen him kind of sneak up through there and he just took off and I seen he was going to get it. And gosh, yep. what a relief. You that know? was it right there. Yeah, too. That was it. A couple yep. downs. Victory formation, motherfuckers. Let's go. And then the sigh of relief. Ah. Oh, man. It was so good. Let's eat some dinner. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I have an appetite now. Now we can eat some food. Sure. Well, and that was, that's what, <laughs> that's what I posted last night on, uh, I think it was Facebook. I'm like, respect the run, bitches. Yep. I'm like, yep. let's go Motor City Kitties. You know, JG, he's not afraid to run, no. but he's got to have the right opportunity. He's not going to run just for the fuck of it. Yeah. But he's not afraid to get out there and fucking put the yards down. You don't get that first down for us. And that sealed the game. Yeah. Yep. That was that, it. That, that iced the game right there. Yep. That was it. I was like, fuck, man. That was a thing of beauty. I'm really glad that uh, Bates missed extra point didn't really come back to haunt us. Yeah, it, that it, felt it almost did. That felt really fucking ominous. It, it did. I was <laughs> like, man, this is gonna suck. Like, yes, it sucks for me. It sucks for him because like he was probably thinking that too. Like, oh, no yeah. fucking way. Like, they better not get right. this touchdown. Right. You know? Yeah, that's that's a real motherfucker. But you know what? Get back out there. Let it be a lesson. Because yep. you pulled that motherfucker in a dome far right, way right, way right. Yeah. Like, and, Calm down, man. You were killing it for the Panthers. You need to kill it for us. Even when he came back for the next one after our, uh, uh, what the hell was he kicking? I think, I think it was the next, yeah, it was the the third touchdown. He was yeah. kicking it and man, it was still really hugging that right goal yeah. post. You know, yep. I'm like, you need to bring that over, bud. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can we line it's him up? It's like when you're playing golf, you got a really bad slice. Yeah. Don't adjust yeah. the slice. Move your body. <laughs> Aim way left. You're going to put it in the middle of the fucking fairway, babe. I feel attacked. <laughs> yeah, right I feel now. attacked. <laughs> I speak from personal experience. If it's relevant to you, then we should play golf together. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, and so we go back and we look at the, the second half. No, we did not have a lot of production. Right. 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 But neither did they. We had a lot of uh, in between the 
the 30s, I guess, 20s kind of production. Did, kind of what we did with uh, the Buccaneers. Yep. Right? The Bucks game. It was like we just couldn't penetrate the red zone. Yep. And there's, I mean, we had a, lot, a, a few opportunities where even if we could have snuck in, you know, three field goals right. on those things, you know, and right. gave us a, a 29, you know, yeah. just, just to kind of extend that thing a little bit out there. Yep. And I hope that at some point we can we can get there. Well, and and I think to that end, and that's the arguments I listened to a ton of 97 one today because we won right. and I wasn't going to be too pissed off. Right. But there was a lot of arguments there. Like, why aren't we taking the easy points? Why aren't we going for the field goals? And it's like, listen, the identity of our coach is we're going to go for it. It doesn't surprise me. It, it didn't surprise know. me no. one bit, one bit. I mean, we are who we are. So we may not like it, but we don't have any say in it. We just need to be okay with it. And for sure. Will it bite us? Maybe. You never know. Yeah. Right? But getting a field goal and then conversely to play devil's advocate, letting Arizona drive down and get a touchdown doesn't do us much fucking good either. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And you're right. There is no like happy medium zone with Dan Campbell and company. No. You know, if you if you get to a point where you're in that field goal zone, now you're shooting for red zone. And if you get in the red zone, God, the chances of us kicking a field goal are really slim. <laughs> You know, so oh, for sure. I, and I think if somebody went through and did a study on like when Dan Campbell has kicked field goals mm-hmm. and with the exception of like ones that were to like win a game, mm-hmm. it was always when we were in like a third and 15 situation, but we were still in the red zone. Right. We're like, it was just right. nonsensical. You're in, you're in double digit yardage that you've got to try to maintain to get your first down. Right. When it's like, oh, this is still going to be a 35 yard chip shot. Yep. So we're just going to take the fucking field goal. And so like that, that makes that, sense. That's kind of his recipe. Yeah, that like makes if, it's, sense. if it's fourth and five or less, we're going for the fucking yeah, first down for it. Yeah. 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 But if, it, if we're still in decent field goal range, weather's good for it. And it's fourth and eight, fourth and nine, he's going to kick the field goal. So fun fact about fourth downs, even though I pretty much know now when we're going to go for it. I still go, Oh my God. And I sit, and I sit <laughs> I on the edge of my say. seat or I fucking, yeah. I'm like, Oh, just yeah. me. I'm pacing. Yeah. Pacing. It, That's why I had to, I have two TVs now so I can pace in between the televisions. <laughs> Jessica has become an absolute master at being able to sync up the audio. So that's some premium shit there. Perfect. Yeah. It works really, really well. But anyway, I don't know. Let's, We've talked about the game as a whole, Mm -hmm. basically. As far as the fourth quarter goes, we were able to hold them. We finished it off. Yep. Got victory formation. Did what we had to do, right? Exactly. Leave Arizona victors. Yep. So what is what is your one positive, your one negative coming away from this week's game? Um, my one positive is our defense. Our defense as a whole. Uh, I think they match the energy that Aaron Glenn wants to bring with yep. his defense. Yep. And I think we're going to really see his plan come together yeah, this year so as too. long as well, barring and, any injuries. And now that he has weapons. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I mean. Now that you have the players that you really need in those spots right. to run that uh, defense, I think, it, I think it's going to shine. Yep. Uh, the negative uh, is that we still didn't. We still didn't put any points up in the second half. Yeah. Uh, and that's concerning. We need to we need to put that whole game together. Uh our defense can definitely help us out right through this little struggle here. And and I and I don't even know to to that point, I don't even know if it's necessarily a struggle because I'm not seeing, with the exception of like that blowout game where Dale is lost, mm-hmm. you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of blowouts. Right. You know, we're we're seeing a much more competitive product across the board, across divisions and everything, That's, you know, where we're not seeing, you know, 14, 17 point differentials. Yeah. Right. I, you know, I never even thought about it like that either, but you're absolutely right. A, a more competitive product, not, not a lot of the high fly in. Right. Uh, well, I mean, you don't really have the, the Odell Beckham juniors and stuff anymore. Sure. Mercedes Harrison just got into the league. Right. You do have good receivers. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, you don't have these guys out there, one hand in the ball and these, you know, well, and you're looking at it from a strategy perspective too, 
a lot of it comes down to time of possession, Mm -hmm. being able to convert, you know, so people are looking at running backs a little bit more. We talked about that earlier. You know, the running game is taking a little bit more of a, more of a spotlight now because they realize how important it is. Like, yeah, you can airmail the ball all around the field all you want. And that's great if you can do that. But if you don't have a running game, it makes you kind of one dimensional. Yep. You know, so you're watching, you know, you're seeing guys like Tony Pollard and, you know, Pacheco, you know, Gibbs, Montgomery, you know, these different guys that are really out there running. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot to be said about teams that are running the ball well and how that reflects in their standings. Yeah. And I mean, you, we've seen that for years in Detroit, lack of a running game. You yeah. know, we were just kind of became one dimensional number of years, decades, my yeah. friend, fucking well, decades. That's still number of years. Yeah, it's I'm just true. I'm just it's trying many to, number of years just trying to be nice about it. <laughs> Don't be nice about it. That absolute barren wasteland that was our running game post Barry was just the most disgusting thing on the planet. Uh, Fuck, dude. I think it was Reggie Bush when we had him yeah. was the first guy in like years to have a hundred yard rushing game. Yeah. We hadn't had triple digit a hundred yards rushing. A triple digit rushing game in we have we have like the league record <laughs> for consecutive games for double digit rushing yards. And I think that's why it feels so good to to have a team that yes. we think can legitimately do yes. this. You yeah, know, and it's like holy shit. And I mean, there isn't any reason if they keep it up that Demo and Gibbs can't both rush for a thousand plus yards this season. For sure. Without a fucking doubt. Yeah. There's oh. no doubt in my mind. And I couldn't be more happy about that. <laughs> no. Well, it just gives so much dimensionality to the team. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know. I know last week we were so flustered and frustrated. There was probably way more emotion. I'm just so happy. I'm, I, I just, I feel good about where we're at. Uh, I guess let's talk about where we're going. Yeah. Next week, Monday night football, prime time at home versus our arch nemesis. Yes. The Seattle Seahawks. Fucking. And I don't even know how they became our nemesis, but, but Gino, I, do you feel Gino that Smith way? has had our number. I know for so I, many years. That's how I feel is but like Pete Carroll's gone. Right. So I'm hoping that somebody's going to try to mix it up. <laughs> And do something different because the Seahawks have had our number for a number of years. And I don't fucking like it. Me neither. And Geno Smith is looking like Sam Darnold, who's looking like Aaron Rodgers. And I'm just like, what the fuck is happening in this league right now? We're in a goddamn twilight zone. I know. Backup quarterbacks who are starters. Fucking insane. Go to another team and they are good. Oh my God. Yeah. Geno Smith, you know, coming to town Monday night. First off, how the fuck am I supposed to survive? Thursday night, all day Saturday with college, all day Sunday with NFL, and still have to wait through an entire workday for Monday night. I know. And then go back to work on Tuesday. What a crock of shit. This is, I don't want these primetime games. I was telling Audrey at work, yeah. like, girl, bring me back to my Sundays at one. Yeah. That's how yeah. my, that is in my DNA. Sundays at one o'clock, I know to turn the Lions on. Kelly asked me, since this was a 425 game, she goes, what's your favorite game? And I said, I think the one o'clock Sunday, Sunday game. Sunday at one, baby. Yeah. Like she she liked the the midday game because we could do a bunch of family shit during the yeah. day. We clean, did the same thing. Yeah, yep. clean the house, do this, yep. do that, blah, blah, blah. Then come home, kind of start dinner. And that and that was nice, especially being a beautiful fall day, cooled yep. down, yep. open the windows up, you know, that kind of thing. So it was a perfect football day for in Without Michigan. A doubt. Um but, but yeah. Ugh. I need my Sundays at one knowing that it's next Monday and it's like an eight o'clock and I'm here's the biggest issue. I'm a loud motherfucker, right? Yeah. I'm a noisy bitch. Mm -hmm. And that's not even talking about football. I'm just a loud motherfucker. (laughs) You add my favorite football team to the mix on a Monday night. I got these fucking kids. They got to be going to school and oh, they need a fucking so many hours of sleep. I don't give a shit. I am here to watch this fucking football game, damn it. Right when they get home, everybody's taking a nap. Seriously, great everybody's idea. Everybody's taking a nap right great now. Great idea. Or I'm just going to double dose them with melatonin. <laughs> and put on one of them white noise things. Sleep you know? tight, children. We'll see you soon. Nighty night. <laughs> they wake up in the morning. They've drooled all over themselves. Like, oh, God. Slept really good, Dad. Be like, oh, it's good. It's great. Right. Lines won. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, Dad, did they? Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't hear me. I was trying to be quiet. <laughs> I uh, so anyway, I'm 
I'm I'm excited for the game, but I'm with you. These eight o'clock games are kind of brutal. Oh. The older I get, I mean, I got to get up early in the morning and shit. And I'm like, I'm gonna stay up for it. Don't get oh, me wrong. Yeah, like that's not even a question. But it's, it's all- unlike X, who will go to bed at seven o'clock before pregame even starts. I might I might take a nap when I get home from work. Just not a, a bad just, idea. Just a quick little forty five minute. You know, I can't nap. It doesn't work for me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Ah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pound a Celsius right before game time. Oh, that's a good idea. It'll probably, be, it'll probably wear off. Waiting on that sponsorship. <laughs> Great rush. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then here's here's the other good thing. If we can beat the fucking bricks off of Geno Smith and the Seahawks, which I really want to do, week five is our bye week. Yep. Week five is our bye week, so that gives us an opportunity to just relax, to chill, let these guys get healthy because we're a little banged up. Yeah, yeah. A lot of teams are. We're a little banged up. So maybe going into our bye week a little early will work to our benefit. I 100% agree. You talked about that, I think, in the first week. Yeah. You know, saying the week five might end up being good. And now yeah, here we are. Yep. We'll have uh, Laporta and McNeil that can heal up. Yep. Well, I don't know how long Branch will be out. Apparently, he's in concussion protocol and shit. So yeah. he did Fingers say crossed. significant time. So Branch, Branch is playing lights out. Branch is playing lights out, so I want that boy back because he's he's earning his keep uh, yeah, back there sure. right now. He's doing a fucking hell of a job. Hell of a job. So, Well, I'm going to have to go through and uh, watch some Seattle film. I will not weekend. do that. <laughs> I will just wallow in my anxiety for seven straight days until kickoff occurs. You know what I like is those games that they that you can watch that are fast forwarded, like NFL and 60 or whatever. Yeah, I like watching those if you haven't seen the game. Are they on like the NFL YouTube channel? Uh yeah, I think they're on those and then like uh the regular NFL channel that you get with your package. Okay. You know, they're on there too. I think Talk it's called NFL package, and 60. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's your football package. <laughs> oh I got you. I got a football package for you. <laughs> Well, and then tonight we have uh we have the Bengals and the Commanders. Yep. And then we have the Bills and Jaguars. Jaguars. No, I think it's swapped. I think, I think, we, it's, I, Bill, I think it's Buffalo and Jacksonville, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Buffalo and Jacksonville. And then Washington and uh Cincy. Cincy. Yep. yep. So well, Cincy's 0 2. I know. They always start 0 2. Are they gonna go out there and handle the commanders? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think that they are fucking pissed last week because yep. the football gods shit on their heads, yep. letting fucking Kansas City get out of there with the fucking W at the very end. That sucked. I mean, and granted, there was a lot of controversy this week about that pass interference call. Right. But I watched it in real time. That was 100% pass interference. 100% pass It was interference. absolutely the correct call. I bag on the refs constantly because they have fucked over my Lions more times than I can count. Yep. How many laws have been established because of the fucking Lions, right? You know? Anyway, watching that live, 100% correct call. Yep. Absolutely best, best call. So I agree. Yes, Kansas City is... Just lucky. They're lucky that they well, get a lot of calls on their side. Because they're Kansas City yep. and they're winning and they're you they're know doing they're the hot shit they need to and do. they're yeah. So I don't we don't we don't have to like it, but it is what it is. <laughs> we're winning too now. We're That's coming true. coming for your title, Pat Mahomes. Fuck yeah, we are. Fuck that dynasty bullshit. Yep. You can have your dynasty, but there's gonna be an asterisk there this year, bitch. Did you hear the <laughs> did you hear the Jared Goff chants? I did not hear that, but I did see some reels and some TikToks yeah, yeah. from people that were at the game. I tell you what, Detroit Lions fans, they fucking travel. Dude, they showed out in Arizona. They they Holy fucking travel. Shit. And that looked like a Detroit home game. Yeah. If it weren't for the red seats in the stadium, mm-hmm. you wouldn't even known you were at Arizona. <laughs> you wouldn't even known. I was like, these fucking beautiful bastards. I love you. It's that's good stuff. All right. Well, that's it. We'll be back next Tuesday. Yes. Next Tuesday. So it's going to be a Tuesday night uh, episode for this because we got the bullshit, man. The fucking Monday night game. Don't bring the vid in here, man. I ain't got time for that shit. I don't have no fucking vid. Get out of here. (laughs) Well, you never know. I'm going to have to mask up.
No, you're not. <laughs> Flatten the curve, motherfucker. <laughs> God, I got like PTSD from that. Jeez. I know. I all of a sudden my chest got real tight. Yeah, I'm Ooh. like, oh I'm God, like, maybe I do. Maybe I do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where's Where's my vitamin D in emergency? Give me that r- stat, stat, stat. Somebody give me a centrum. All right. Well, that's it. This has been another amazingly entertaining and fun episode of Incredibly Uncensored Detroit, motherfucking Lions edition. I had a victory Monday. Yes. Let's fucking go. I'm fucking stoked. I cannot wait for next week. Geno Smith, we got your ass. We're coming for you, baby. We are coming for you, bitch. Yep, we're coming for you. We love you. We're sure you're a very nice human being, but fuck you on the football field. We're going to fucking destroy you. <laughs> anyway, I am Johnny B. Good, the flip flop agent, joined by my boy, Mikey B. Mikey B. Let's go. We will see you next week for another edition of Incredibly Uncensored Detroit Lions podcast edition see you soon seahawks fuck the packers